It's a ritual that never changes. A Tahiti Pearl Regatta simply has to start with the inauguration of the village, which historically has been based in Uturoa on the island of Raiatea. While in 2016, rain upset the arrangements somewhat, it would appear that the Polynesian spirits were feeling much kinder this year. It's very, very beautiful. So I hope there will be a little bit of wind to push all the boats. The islands under the wind are islands where we can easily navigate. And by the way, we have very, very beautiful lagoons. And so I invite everyone to come with us to do this course. And especially after the course, there are always people who come to us. And that's the objective. As for the numbers, everything is looking good. There are long queues. For the 14th edition of the Tahiti Pearl Regatta, registrations are pouring in. Ça va être une bonne année euh, parce que il y a beaucoup de participants, donc des nouveaux participants aussi euh, quand, quand jamais fait la TPR qui, qui étaient dans les îles et qui du coup euh, se disaient allez pourquoi pas euh, cette année je la fais et du coup ça motive pas mal ouais. Donc ouais, 33 pour l'instant 33 bateaux, ça, ça peut monter. In the end, there were 38 boats doing battle out on the race courses. There is no point in hiding it. These are among the finest waters in the world. If you needed to be convinced, the training race that took place in the Riotia Lagoon offered a great example. A warm-up where the result did not count, but taught us a few things. Bah, c'est toujours euh, utile de s'entraîner, hein. euh, ça permet de faire les derniers réglages, euh, de voir si euh, l'équipage est au point, Et puis ça nous permet aussi de nous jauger par rapport euh, aux concurrents. Later in the day, when the briefing took place, George Correll, the race director, supplied all the customary info before the Tahiti Pearl Regatta could really begin. Tous les matins, il y aura un briefing VHF à 7h30. Le briefing VHF sur le canal 8. Demain, le parcours ce sera Rayatea, Waine, et le départ aura lieu devant le port du Turoa, juste ici devant. On Thursday, May 25th, Raiatea is waking up. The start of the first race is gradually drawing near. It's time for the final preparations for the competitors divided up into five racing categories. Multi-halls, Division I monohalls, Division II monohalls, cruising, and for the first time, pirogues with sails. It's the first time we participate to this course. And we want to show you that the pirogue award exists always. And as tradition dictates in Polynesia, wherever there is a challenge ahead, it is quite natural to ask for help by praying to the spirits. This year in the multi-hall category, we can see that an old favorite is back. Missing from the Tahiti Pearl Regatta in 2016, Pierre Coso knows that all eyes will be on him at the helm of his 45-foot catamaran. On a déjà gagné sept fois en cette participation. C'est la huitième. Donc à chaque fois, on est un peu le bateau à abattre. Et on va vraiment devoir se battre parce que cette année, il y a donc les pulses qui sont vraiment des, des multicoques de, de course. Hein. Nous, on est quand même un bateau de, de croisière euh, habitable. Donc euh, la barre est haute. The process Pierre Coso was talking about are also taking part in the Tahiti Pearl Regatta for the first time. Let's take a look at this little gem of a multi hop C'est un petit trimaran de 6 mètres de long, à bras repliable. Donc c'est à la fois euh, quasiment un engin euh, de plage qu'on peut tracter derrière une voiture, euh, avec lequel on peut sortir en famille, et puis une belle bête euh, de course également. Donc très versatile et très sympa. So today's program includes an offshore race between the islands of Raiatea and Uahin. 23 nautical miles, or just over 42 kilometers. The president of the Tahitian Sailing Federation, who is taking part himself, tells us more about what to expect. C'est le parcours le plus éprouvant physiquement puisque c'est un, un parcours au pré et c'est une plus, la plus grande distance en fait. Donc euh, en moyenne, ce sera, je pense, entre 3 et 4 heures de, de navigation. Tout va dépendre de, des conditions météo qu'on a aujourd'hui, qui sont très changeantes en ce moment. Early in the morning, with the 15-knot easterly wind, the race directors signaled the start for the 38 crews competing in the Tahiti Pearl Regatta. They set off towards the island of Uahin. Of 
Once out of the Tivapiti Channel, the monohull and cruising fleets soon spread out over the race course. Looking for stronger winds, some boats like Team Lipton Ice Tea opted for the northeasterly route. Apart from the Gem 24 Trésor de Tahiti Espoir, the other multi hauls found it tricky to get out of the channel. What followed in this leg was not going to be kind to them either. Here's the reason why. For multicoque, we don't have the lest. Tant que le bateau n'est pas lancé, on peut on peut faire ni vitesse ni cap. Donc, ce qui se passe, c'est qu'on dérive énormément. Choosing an option involving aiming for the direct route, Trésor de Tahiti Espoir would soon get ahead of her main rivals and completed the course in under four hours. For the first attempt to be made by Jam 24 in the Tahiti Pearl Regatta, the 100% Polynesian crew, skippered by Teva Veronique, really threw down the gauntlet from the start. Première manche, elle était sympathique, elle n'avait pas tout bon au début, et on a fini avec du vent, donc c'est cool. Surtout qu'en en approchant de l'île, la houle s'efface, donc là c'est de la glisse quoi, totale. J'ai participé plusieurs fois à la TP, donc je connais bien ce plan d'eau. Donc euh, je savais où est-ce qu'il fallait aller et puis euh, surtout ne, où est-ce qu'il fallait ne pas aller. Quoi. Taking line honors and winner in correct time, Trésor de Tahiti Espoir came in ahead of Pierre Cosso's Nusa Dua pour Pearl Romance and David Alouche's Paul 600. As for the monohulls in Division 1 and 2, the direct route was also favored, even if that meant doing some extra tax. In that little contest, Key de Joie came out on top. The red boat was the first to cross the finish line in the Fiti Channel at the end of a leg that suited her well. On peut utiliser à plein toute notre toile et toute notre puissance, hein, parce qu'on passe quand même assez bien la houle avec ce bateau qui est qui est un peu lourd. Euh, donc c'était vraiment vraiment des, des bonnes conditions. Bon, ça manque un peu de variété sur cette manche là parce qu'on n'a pas eu de, de spi, mais c'est c'était quand même très très bien. It is important to remember that the calculations for the official rankings in the Tahiti Pearl Regatta are based on corrected time. In other words, a time handicap is applied to the fastest boats so that everyone can race on the same footing. For example, in this first race for the Division I monohalls in real time, Team Lipton T was ahead of Araria Banque de Polynésie and Rayatea Yacht, an 850 Pogo. Third in real time, but winner under corrected time, which certainly pleased her skipper. On est arrivé troisième l'année dernière, donc euh, on veut absolument faire mieux. On s'est préparé tout au long de l'année, on s'est bien préparé. On a un bateau qui est prêt, avec des voiles neuves, donc euh, on, on l'imagine très bien en tout cas. In the cruising category, which includes boats which do not have measurement certificates, Gavrinis and the crew from the Tahiti Yacht Club really dominated the contest. We should add that over this first race course, more than half of the competitors in the cruising category missed the deadline. At the end of a long day of racing, it was time to relax. The Tahiti Pearl Regatta is very special in that it involves sailing between the islands and stopping each evening in a different place. An opportunity for some to discover the local culture and to enjoy the festive atmosphere of the Tahiti Pearl Regatta, as we can see with the American crew of Hokulele. We were not serious racers. But we love the, the festivities. <laughs> really, there's no losers in this regatta. We are all winners. It is a lovely event. I will do it again. The hospitality, the culture here in Tahiti wonderful. has been wonderful, magnifique. picture postcard of dawn breaking over the Huayin Lagoon, which is nicknamed the Wild Island because of the abundance of vegetation, but also because of the peace and quiet you can find here. The peace and harmony continued more or less when the competitors found themselves under the orders of the race committee for the first windward-leeward race in the 2017 Tahiti Pearl Regatta. This included two laps of the race course and a total distance of six nautical miles. Discover the start as if you were there aboard Pierre Coso's catamaran. The second race in this year's Tahiti Pearl Regatta would firstly confirm that the Diam 24 Trésor de Tahiti Espoir was clearly dominating the multi halls. All eyes shifted to the duel between the catamaran sailed by Pierre Cosso and Nicolas Gruet. 
The skipper of Blue Composites, Tahiti, kept his opponent in check right up to the moment when he touched the Broy in the penultimate rounding. He had to pay a penalty for this mistake, which allowed Pierre Cousseau's crew to get ahead and get some very valuable points at the finish. In the Division I monohalls, Team Lipton Ice Tea came in ahead, confirming they were well placed for overall victory. They finished ahead of Aria Ria Banque de Polynesie, which was a little off the pace they set last year. In the Division II monohalls, Alliance, skippered by Roland Marty and Bureau Park by Aruna Sailing Team, skippered by Benjamin Priou, fought a close duel. At the end of this windward leeward race, the advantage went to Alliance thanks to their solid experience in the event. This same equipage, it's the second year. Otherwise, we're five, and there are four, it's at least the sixth or seventh edition we've done together. So everyone knows the boat. In Polynesia, we can see that age is not what matters most. Benjamin Priou, just 28, is a perfect illustration of that. A keen racer, he began his Tahiti Pearl Regatta adventure just two years ago. Depuis tout petit, je suis sur Tahiti et j'ai acheté un voilier par passion, passion de la mer. Et et bon, j'avais pas mal de potes qui qui aimaient aussi la navigation. Et on s'est dit, bah pourquoi pas former un équipage pour justement bah continuer l'aventure, bah cette deuxième édition pour nous de la TPR et aller à fond, sonner à fond, préparer le bateau pour qu'il soit vraiment au top et qu'on soit présent sur la ligne chaque année. Benjamin Priou and his crew managed to grab an opportunity to do well in the key part of the second day of racing, a rally between Huayin and Taha, 25 nautical miles, which they covered in downwind conditions from start to finish. On chante le génois. 2 C'est bon, c'est parti. Un bon départ. C'est bon. On se prépare à envoyer le speed. Allez, ça monte. The crew of Team Lipton Ice Tea did well with their maneuvers and were ideally placed on the start line. It was indeed a perfectly controlled start. On les aime bien ceux-là. D'ailleurs, c'est l'exemple, hein. Toute la flotte est derrière. A fleet of motorhauls which could only watch powerless as the stern of Team Lipton Ice Tea extended the lead as the wind built. Tu vises le creux, tu la passe. The crew of the yellow boat, skippered by Didier Colliers, is coached by the highly experienced Benoit Parnaudot. For the past three years, the sailor, who finished 10th in the 2004-2005 Vendée Globe, has been offering his advice and has been on board during the races, and that is a clear advantage. And today, as the coach explains, they have to avoid falling into the trap of broaching. Le vent il est un peu en rafale, donc si au, au moment où on se met à border, à l'offer, il y a un coup de vent, le bateau va se coucher. Et c'est là où c'est tout le jeu de, de bien choquer les voiles dans la descente de la vague. Team Lipton Ice Tea reigned supreme in this third race. The pace set by the Class 40 was too high. The chasing boats could only sit back and enjoy the superb conditions for sailing under Spinnaker. One of the great stories in the Tahiti Pro Regatta is that of the Frihult 38, which finished 11th in the first Route du Rhum almost 40 years ago. A legendary boat called Experimental, and today rechristened with the same name. A nod to pay tribute to the skill of the lady that was her skipper in 1978, the late Florence Artaud. The drag race, which began at the start, continued as they approached Taha. It is said that the heady, light aroma of vanilla drifts away from the plantations, which are scattered around the island. Mon père, quand il est arrivé la première fois sur cette île en 1962, il était venu pour être instituteur. Uh, il disait qu'on sentait la vanille du lagon. Myth or reality, it is certainly not down to chance that Taha is referred to as Vanilla Island. En fait, elle est appelée l'île Vanille parce que pendant de nombreuses décennies, surtout vers les années 40, 50, 60, cette île était le deuxième producteur mondial de gousses de vanille. On produisait entre 250 à 300 tonnes de gousses de vanille fraîches. 
À l'époque, il parlait en tonnes. Actuellement, on parle en kilos. The development of artificial vanilla flavoring, which is 50 times cheaper, led to a collapse in production in Polynesia, which today only represents around 1% of the global business. But vanilla from Taha remains the one that leading chefs prefer. Well, la vanille de, de Taha, c'est la meilleure du monde. Vous ne regretterez pas. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Maruru. Back on the water, we're in the Tohahotu Channel, which marks the finish to this third race between Huain and Vanilla Island. In the multi-hall category, while, as usual, Trésor de Tahiti Espoir was the fastest, under corrected time, Blue Composites Tahiti wins the race after a great battle against the Paw 600s. Là, on a vu des conditions magiques, euh, vraiment faites pour le bateau, avec un équipage hyper réactif et on, on s'est régalé. On était dans du surf euh, entre 13 et 19 nœuds tout le temps et vraiment, on s'est amusé. On s'est amusé, on est allé vite. In Division 1 monohalls, Team Lipton Ice Tea achieved an almost perfect day. After winning in the morning on the windward leeward course off Uahin, she got line honors in Taha and took the lead in the overall ranking. On est très très content, on a énormément progressé par rapport à l'année dernière et par rapport à il y a deux ans. Et euh, l'équipage est vraiment dans les meilleures conditions. Euh, on a vraiment optimisé euh, les trois régates qu'on a fait pour l'instant. On a fait très très peu d'erreurs et voilà, on est, on est super content. Ouais. In Monohall Division 2, in real time, Key De Joie finished ahead of Poe Nuit and Experimental. But it was Alliance and Bureau Pack by Aruna Sailing Team which got the best results of the day under corrected time. As for the boats in the cruising category, victory went to Gail Rochette's Kaila, and in the pirogues with sails, Tohora Iti performed particularly well, completing the course in three hours and 40 minutes. For 10 years, the Tahiti Pro Regatta has been twinned with the Voile de Saint-Tropez. So it was only natural that this anniversary was celebrated with the patron of honor representing this long-term partnership. This year, it was therefore the president of the Société Nautique de Saint-Tropez who took on this role. Je connais la Tahiti Pearl Regatta depuis qu'on a ce, cet accord de partenariat avec Saint-Tropez et euh, vraiment j'étais très honoré. Ce sont deux événements bien sûr différents. Les concurrents viennent chercher autre chose dans chaque événement et j'apprécie toute la simplicité dans laquelle cette, cette épreuve est organisée, de la bonne humeur, du sérieux sur l'eau. Tous les ingrédients sont réunis pour qu'on passe du très bon temps et puis on voudrait que ça dure. Quoi. It is also important to point out that this partnership also involves an exchange as the Tahitian crews who win the Tahiti Pearl Regatta are invited to Saint-Tropez during the voile and the same is true in the opposite direction for the winners of the Voile de Saint-Tropez, who are invited to take part in the Tahiti Pro Regatta. The sun is rising in the lagoon close to the island of Taha. The competitors are moored up and are having their bread delivered for breakfast. They are going to have plenty to eat, as this final day of racing will require a lot of energy as they race around the windward-leeward course in the morning and then sail around the island which traditionally marks the conclusion of the Tahiti Pearl Regatta. The two monohull divisions set off for two laps and a total distance of 5.7 miles. They will be followed a few minutes later by the multi-hulls. In the later category, the Gem 24 Trésor de Tahiti Espoir, the solid leader so far, was forced to retire early on. They suffered a halyard problem, which the crew attempted to resolve as fast as possible to be able to line up at the start of the round Taha race. It was just the start of a very bad day, as Teva Veronique and her crew had no idea of what was to come. To sum up, it was a complicated fourth race during which the Mara Mou, the southerly wind which blows in the Pacific, strengthened, causing some very tricky situations. An excellent warm-up, however, just before they took part in the ultimate leg of the Tahiti Pro Regatta, the Round Taha race, which the competitors were all looking forward to. Moi j'adore ce tour, faire de la voile dans un lagon, c'est magique. Surtout en faisant le tour du Nil, donc on a toutes les conditions, la dévente, le vent. C'est vraiment chouette. C'est autant en technique qu'en qualité de paysage. Et... Oui, c'est un des musts de Polynésie. Ouais. The program involved sailing around a 20-mile course around Taha. It is the shortest leg of the event, but certainly not the easiest, even if it is the finest.
This year, the Round Taha race was renamed the Tahitian Pearl Race in English, an idea that came out of the partnership between the Tahiti Pearl Regatta and the Tahitian Pearl Association of French Polynesia. The aim was to promote Tahitian pearls and the unrivaled expertise in this area. What could be more natural, you may ask, for an event called the Tahiti Pearl Regatta? The Tahitian Pearl Race saw the Diam 24 Trésor de Tahiti Espoir confirm its incredible domination over the other multi-halls. Teva Veronique and the crew would complete the race around the island in 1 hour and 38 minutes before an appeal from Nusadua for Pearl Romance, their closest rival in the overall rankings. J'espère qu'on sera pas disqualifié. Il y a un problème de parcours apparemment, mais nous on pense qu'on a respecté tout le balisage, donc je pense pas qu'il y ait de problème ce soir. However, the jury sat and Pierre Cossos' appeal was accepted. Trésor de Tahiti Espoir did not respect the whole race. The Gem 24 was logically disqualified from the leg, which in the end was won by Nusa Dua for Pearl Romance. It was a disastrous day for Teva Veronique and the crew, who lost their position as leader in the overall rankings to Pierre Cousseau's crew, who were clearly delighted. I think that was one of our plus belle TPR. It's our eighth victory. And I dois dire that it was the most TPR because, first of all, we had the wind, et les bonnes conditions qui étaient au rendez-vous. Et puis dans notre catégorie, en multicoque, le niveau est vraiment monté. Pierre Cosso, a handsome young actor in French cinema in the 80s, who more or less disappeared from sight for a while before becoming the skipper of a catamaran in Polynesia. C'est vrai que j'ai démarré il y a 35 ans avec un film qui s'appelle La Boom. J'ai tourné une quarantaine de films derrière entre la France, les états unis et l'Italie. Mais j'ai toujours eu dans ma tête ce vieux rêve de gamin qui était de faire le tour du monde, de partir dans le sillage de Bernard Moitessier, qui est un peu notre gourou à tous. Donc euh, à 40 ans, j'ai acheté mon bateau et j'ai largué les amarres. Ça fait 14 ans que je vis sur mon bateau maintenant. On est des nomades des mers. Chaque matin, quand je me réveille, je suis toujours aussi conscient de la chance que j'ai de pouvoir partager ce bonheur avec ma famille, mes enfants et mes amis en Polynésie. In the overall rankings for the multi halls, victory went to Nusadua for Pearl Romance. Blue Composites Tahiti, Nicolas Cruyas Catamaran, was second. David Alouche and his Paul 600 made it to third place on the podium. In Division I Mono Halls, Team Lipton Ice Tea came out on top in the Round Taha race and won the Tahiti Pro Regatta in her category. Third time lucky, you may say. C'est très émouvant parce que c'était euh, la première année, bon, c'était la découverte. La deuxième année, euh, on s'est rendu compte que bah, voilà, la regate, c'est pas évident, il, faut, il y a beaucoup de choses à faire. Et puis là, bah, c'est l'apothéose, on est, on est super content. The overall rankings for Division 1 saw first place go to Team Lipton Ice Tea. In second place, we find Tete, Pascal Alain's Speed Feet. And third place went to Alexandre de Grain's Rioter Yacht. Taking line honors in the fifth and final race, Bureau Pack by Aruna Sailing Team worked hard to overcome Alliance. It was, however, in vain, as Roland Marty's Omega 34 would triumph in Mono Hall Division 2. La régularité euh, a primé, on était bien, bien préparé. Dès qu'on participe à une course, euh, on a envie de gagner. Et la TPR, c'est vraiment une magnifique course, donc euh, on a d'autant plus envie d'être bien, bien classé. Alliance, top of the Division 2 ranking, was followed by Bureau Pack by Aruna Sailing Team, skippered by the young sailor Benjamin Priou. Pour nuit, David Moutou's Gypsy 43 finished third. We should add that Roland Marty's crew will have the honor of representing the Tahiti Pearl Regatta at the Voile de Saint-Tropez in September. In the cruising yachts, Gadjo Dilo's win in the Round Taha race enabled him to come out on top in the overall rankings ahead, respectively, of Kyla and Gavrini. The Pro Challenge also goes to Alliance ahead of Team Lipton Ice Tea and Nusadua for Pearl Romance. Finally, in the pirogues with sails, Tohora Iti with Tamato Akohan at the helm came out on top. The curtain goes down on this 14th Tahiti Pro Regatta, which lived up to its promise and fully satisfied the organizers. On est extrêmement content, non seulement par le plateau sportif qu'on a réussi à réunir sur la Tahiti Pro Regatta, le type de bateau totalement différent puisqu'on a réussi à avoir aussi bien des bateaux vraiment compétition que des bateaux de charter, que des bateaux de plaisance. Les conditions météo étaient idéales. 
15 à 18 nœuds de vent en permanence. Et donc cette Tahiti Pearl Regatta va être en plus d'un rendez-vous annuel ici en Polynésie, le faire valoir du dynamisme, de la plaisance, du nautisme et du maritime en Polynésie française. Here we are very open about it. We dream of welcoming sailors who tend to visit the Mediterranean and Caribbean. We want them to make their way through the Panama Canal and head for the South Pacific, which has so much to offer and is so surprising for leisure sailing, holiday sailing and sail racing. So note down the date for the next edition of the Tahiti Pro Regatta, which will take place from 7th to the 12th of May 2018 and will be celebrating its 15th anniversary, an event that you simply cannot miss.